This again is ZengoMD. The next video in our series on cosmetic uses of PRP exposes the incredible differences in quality of PRP that you might receive in your own community. See, most people don't know that the term PRP is very broad and in most cases it represents something less potent than what was used in the studies that proved all the great things that PRP can do, which we already presented in our How Does PRP Work video. Okay, let's get started. Well, if you watched our other video, you know that platelets are these little blue things floating around in your blood that are most commonly used for blood clotting. Yet they have potent growth factors that induce tissue growth and healing. These platelets, only when injured or activated, release the contents of their granules. When PRP is used for cosmetic purposes, it stimulates tissues in areas where we have volume loss due to age. So we activate the platelets outside the body and then put them back fresh into the area to be treated. And here is an excerpt from our other PRP video on these different growth factors that platelets carry inside their alpha granules. Each of these important growth factors can stimulate new cell growth and blood flow like any other substance known. Yet it is completely safe and non-allergenic because it is yours and it is reasonably priced since there's no drug company involved. You cannot make any of your own PRP until you draw blood fresh on the day of treatment. And as we'll learn shortly, the amount of blood drawn and the percentage of that which your provider calls PRP will be instrumental in determining the kind of results you get from your treatment. Yeah, the amount of blood drawn and the way it is handled are the two most important variables in this process. And you as the paying customer deserve to know how much value you're getting. See, PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma, and the word rich here implies that the platelet count of the product we call PRP has to contain more platelets per cc of volume of whole blood than the whole blood that was drawn from your arm. But it doesn't state a minimum increase. It could contain one more platelet. So a slight increase or a seven-fold increase could both be called PRP. Or let's put it this way. Imagine you order a cheeseburger, paying for and expecting this, but instead you get this. Bottom line is the order was fulfilled. They're both cheeseburgers, but that's where the similarities end. Luckily, this classic article in the medical literature has defined the optimal concentration of PRP. And only that highly concentrated PRP has been shown to prove how PRP stimulates cell growth. The predominant published study was the Kakuto study from 2008, which we also discussed in our last video on how PRP works. And here is the blood that they drew. There were not any FDA cleared PRP isolation kits for cosmetic use back then. So they just drew blood into two small tubes of anticoagulated uh, material included. No gel plugs or anything fancy inside. They analyzed this and got a baseline platelet count here. Now, of course, they did not put this back into live patients. They did a laboratory experiment. You can't do this now on a live patient. Of course, there's a lot of stuff in these tubes that we don't want to re-inject and study, whether we inject it back into our patient or if we're doing a lab test. So large amounts of red cells, which make the patient look bruised for days, and some of the white cells that could increase inflammation, we want to reject. So the next step that we do in the commercial preparation of PRP is the centrifugation or the spinning. And you're left with a cartoon version of this. Red cells on the bottom, white cells and platelets in the little line in the middle, and liquid plasma on top. We want to save that little 1% layer in the middle without keeping too many red cells and without losing too many platelets. And we now know without a doubt that the best platelets are trapped in the top layer of the red cells after a single spin like this. So it's not just obvious uh, that all the good stuff is above the red-white interface. Now let's get back to the Kakuto study. Here is their spun blood after a single spin. They took all of the plasma above the red cell line and found that it had 1.7 times the platelets that the original blood draw had. This could be called PRP, but they chose not to do that. They took this material plus the top layer of red cells and spun it again. So they drew whole blood, they spun it once, took all of the plasma and some of the very top red blood cells, which are known to trap the most immature platelets with the biggest alpha granules, and then they spun it a second time. Then they only took the lowest part of this sample and properly called it their best PRP. And this fraction had a whopping seven times increase in platelet concentration compared to the original whole blood. The rest was called PPP, or platelet-poor plasma, which is shown here to have a lower concentration than the original whole blood, but it is dissolved in crystal clear plasma. 
And this is important because in order to get the roughly 100x increase in growth factors that the study showed, you need to process your blood in the same way that they did here. And that means only keeping the smallest and best percentage of that whole blood to call PRP. And not just keep everything over the red interface after the first spin. And as we've already shown you, when you expose live tissue to this higher concentration of PRP, you get the growth and stimulation as was shown in the Kakuto study. Look in the circles at how that single spin fraction that could be called PRP by some people does nothing to stimulate tissue compared to whole blood itself. No significant difference in stimulating stem cells or fat cells. This is the key point of digging so deep into this data, and I will guarantee you that 99 out of 100 providers of cosmetic PRP out there have not done their homework in this regard. Seriously, is it worth spending $1,000 on three treatments at a med spa that calls the single spin stuff PRP, where you see right here it doesn't work any better than unspun blood? or spend the same amount for two treatments with a board certified MD who prepares it properly so you get proven results at the tissue level. It's your choice. Let's dig a little deeper into the three FDA approved PRP isolation kits. There are many, but we'll look at these three and see what kind of concentrations that they get. First, we have Eclipse, one of the best selling gel tube kits. This means that you have no control over the interface as the gel plug decides what cells to keep and which ones to exclude. So the second spin that includes a few red cells like Kakuto did can't be done with these. Eclipse states that 10% of the platelets get lost under the gel plug. And again, remember, the quality of that 10% could be very high because those tend to be the platelets with the biggest alpha granules and the most growth factors. So they call their recovery rate 90%. The actual recovery rate of growth factors may be slightly less. They also state the vast majority of red cells and granulocytes, the other cells we want to avoid that could be pro-inflammatory or cause bruising in a face, are also mostly excluded under the gel plug. Now that's good. Now most providers of PRP use gel tubes and tend to only spin one per patient to save on cost, calling everything above the gel plug PRP. Kudos to Eclipse here for showing you that not everything above the gel plug could be PRP in their video for the 20cc tubes. So here's the process explained by them in their training video. First, in their larger tubes, you add 22 cc's of blood to do the first spin. Without agitating the tube, the top half is drawn out first. Then the bottom fraction is swirled and inverted and removed into a second syringe. Here you see the two syringes side by side. The darker sample is that second syringe, which is called the PRP. The first lighter syringe is the PPP, or platelet pore plasma. This yields six to seven cc's in each. That is enough to do most facial cases or a body area, but might not be enough PRP to do two areas at the same time. So some providers in this case might mix the two together, lowering the quality of the PRP instead of spinning a second 22 cc gel tube. Now let's get to the math and see the concentration of PRP that you actually have. Let's assume that the original whole blood of the patient has a typical platelet count of 300,000 platelets per cc. Therefore, in that 22 cc's, there are 6.6 .6 million platelets. While 90% might be above the gel plug, 10% of the platelets are in the platelet poor fraction. So the remaining 80% are in the platelet rich fraction. The PRP volume is 6.5 cc's, giving you a platelet count of 812,000 per cc. Divide this by the original blood concentration of 300,000, and you get a 2.7x platelet count in the Eclipse PRP, as prepared above in their instruction video. It is PRP but it still falls short of what the Kakuto study used to stimulate tissue. And remember, a 1.7x in the Kakuto study did not improve cell growth. Now let's look at the cheapest option chosen by many med spas. This is region PRP, which also uses a gel tube, but only eight cc's of blood is drawn. This is followed by a single spin where they instruct you to call the entire volume above the gel plug as PRP. There is no platelet pore fraction at all. Looking at their own data, the concentration of this PRP is listed as 1.6 times the platelets in the original blood sample from the patient. Again, that is a 1.6x, proven to be ineffective at stimulating significant growth and per proliferation of fibroblasts or fat stem cells in the Kakuto study. I cannot help but stress that if you've had PRP done and they filled a single gel tube that looked just like the tubes you've had drawn for, say, lab tests, and not larger ones than this, then this is all you're getting for your money. 
Next, we have an example of a larger volume blood draw in a double spin where you can choose your interface, so no gel. This is one FDA kit called Progen PEP, but there are others like Magellan, Harvest, and m -Site. First, they require a 50cc blood draw. The more blood you draw, the more platelets you can start with, right? This is what it looks like after the first spin. Then you can take off most of the red cells from the bottom because there's a port that allows you to access the bottom, but leave a few at the top behind. That is spun a second time. The upper fraction of plasma is removed and you are left with just a few cc's of highly concentrated product. We start with 41 cc's of blood and at the same platelet count, that gives us 12.3 million platelets. Since there's no gel plug, close to 100% of the platelets can be kept for the second spin if you retain enough red cells. Double spin also forces more platelets out of the PPP fraction down into the PRP fraction. Still, 5 to 10% are lost from the PRP fraction even after two spins. We will assume the worst and use a 90% recovery rate. We still have 11.1 .1 million platelets going into that only 6 cc's of PRP volume that you see here after the second spin. This results in a platelet count of 1.85 million per cc, or a whopping 6.2x compared to the original blood. In here, you have a much better approximation of the PRP concentration used in the Kakuto study. So that's the bottom line here. The more blood you draw, the more platelets you can recover, no matter what system you use. But that means if your provider uses gel tubes, then they must spend the money and draw multiple gel tubes from you. If it's the 8cc tubes, then they must draw six tubes, taking only the lowest one cc from each. Alternatively, you can draw two of the larger 22cc gel tubes and keep only six cc's as well. This will get close to the platelet count seen in the single 50cc run example that we just showed. The other disadvantage of gel tubes is that you can't control the interface like you can with the double spin non-gel techniques. Many experienced providers enjoy the flexibility of doing this, and I specify different interfaces depending on whether the PRP is being used in a visible place like the face versus other bodies like the vaginal wall or scalp, where I might keep more red cells, which could get us more growth factors. Finally, many providers do not even use FDA clear kits. So that introduces another potential risk on top of wasting your time and money just to get something called PRP that doesn't even work, or at least according to the Kakuto study, doesn't work. And we'll have more on FDA approval uh, in an upcoming video. Bottom line, don't give in to the hype. When you dig below the surface, you soon find out that not all PRP is created equal. And unlike cheeseburgers, for PRP, the worst one could look like a single crumb versus the best alternative. Where's the beef? The beef is found in larger blood draws and using the double spin techniques. Thanks for watching.